Well, we haven't seen anything from Eagle Eye 1975 in quite a while. And uh, so he decided to upload a video in relation to red flag laws. Let's hear what he has to say. So I want to talk about the red flag laws that we got going on right now. Um, they're being proposed and some of the problems I have with them. I got three main problems with them, really. The first one has to do with language and definitions. Who gets to define these terms of like what it means to be uh, a danger to yourself and others. Who gets to define that? That doesn't really strike me as something that's very good. That it's something that is open to definition. Because if we've learned anything from the left, it's that the uh, slippery slope argument should be removed from the list of logical fallacies when it comes to po political discussion because they've mastered the art of the slippery slope of what I call creeping incre incrementalism. That's all they do. Let's make no mistake about it. The right wing is just as good at incrementalism as the left, okay? Who are you trying to kid, man? So when you say, like, you know, when people say, oh, it's just a slippery slope argument, and it's like, no, not really, because, you know, we are already down, you know, if you're if you're plotting the, the course of the slippery slope from A to B to C all the way to Z, we're already down at frickin' W. What metrics are you using to make that kind of declaration? As far as the subject we're talking about, we're maybe at G or H. We're not at W. You know, you can, if you can trace back the slide back up the slippery slope, you know, going reverse order, uh, reverse direction through time, then, um, you know, it's not a slippery slope argument. It's just, you know, this is the logical next step and this is what their plans are. They've stated as much that these are their plans. So there's that. So like who, who defines what it means to be a danger to yourself and others? What happens when the definition of that is like, let's say it's tied to, you know, recognized diseases or disorders in the DSM-4. And what happens when the political body that makes the DSM-4 or the DSM, I'm sorry, the DSM-5 now, but who, what, what happens when the DSM uh, body that makes the, that determines these things decides that um, voting for Trump is a sign of, uh, being a danger to yourself and others. See, this is why you declared that saying that something is a slippery slope argument is invalid, because you want to make this huge jump without being called out on it. You're actually trying to claim that the DSM-5 might eventually include people who support Trump, and in just a moment you're going to declare that it's people who just declare themselves as conservative. Yeah, dude, it is a slippery slope argument. We're at G and you're declaring that we're at W and the, the very next step is going to be uh, saying that uh, being a Trump supporter is a mental disorder. Yeah, whatever, dude. So what happens when they decide that, um, you know, being a conservative or being anti-LGBT or anti-gay marriage or, you know, what happens when they decide that these are things that would be demonstrative of having, um, you know, being a danger to yourself or others. Never. That's the answer to that question. Number two, the other the next problem I have is, what about people making false reports? People making false reports to, you know, uh, you say, well, this guy's a danger to himself or others just to harass you by weaponizing the agencies of the government. See, now you're making valid arguments. Now you're not doing the slippery slope. This is a legitimate concern that you have. This has happened to me with the city uh, that I live in, people calling the city to harass, have them harass me in their stead, where, you know, I don't know who's actually making the phone call, I don't know who's actually doing the the complaining, because they come out and they say, well, we got a complaint about your uh, your lawn is too high, or you have weeds that need to be pulled, or, you know, you, know, you have peeling paint on your house, and somebody said that that's not up to code, and... You know, you have to fix that or we're going to, you know, have some people come out here and fix it for you and then bill you and put a lien on your house and all this other stuff. Or even worse, you have things with, um, like, CPS, people calling CPS on people just to harass them using, like I said, using the, um, the government as a method of harassment or intimidation against people, right? And that's number problem, problem number two. Uh, there needs to be some sort of really strict and strong uh, punishment for false reports. I fully agree with you there. Just to discourage the false reports. 
Number three, why are we removing the guns from the people rather than treating the people that have these problems? That's a good question. Maybe if we had universal health care and mental health issues weren't so stigmatized and people could actually talk about their problems more easily and people could, could get something done about their problems more easily, this wouldn't be so much of an issue. But that's a good question. Very good question. Don't you think that, let's say somebody is a danger to himself because he's suicidal, because he's depressed, that kind of thing. Why would you do something to make him more angsty? Why would you increase his stress level by having his guns taken away from him? Why would, you know, you basically what you're doing is telling that person, oh, some people are talking about you behind your back. They're seeking, um, they're seeking some sort of, uh, official action against you that, you know, you are being plotted against. And all that's doing is adding to the stress of that person. Same thing for how masculinity has been demonized in recent years. There's this article in The Guardian, of all places, that uh, basically says, after El Paso and Dayton, the left needs to reach out to men, not condemn them. And that's very true. I'll leave a link to that article in the description bar. And so officials come, knock on the door, say we have this warrant to, you know, get all your guns. And, um, you know, then they, so they get all the guns and then they leave the person there going, oh, you know, people are really talking about me and man, that really sucks. Now I don't even have my guns. And, you know, that means people are talking about me behind my back. Don't you think that would add to his stress and anxiety? Absolutely. You know, why aren't we treating the person? You know, why are we removing the guns from the person rather than re removing the person from the guns? You're, you know, and that's what tells me that these things are not at all appropriate for the, you know, an appropriate solution. It's trying to take the guns away rather than treating the disorders, treating the problems of the person. You need to treat the person, not the guns. You need to act on the person, not act on the guns. The person is the problem. This is why involuntary commitments happen. This, you know, and there's a process for that, but this is just a gun grabbing thing. Now, I just thought of a fourth problem I have with this is that how do you know that you've gotten all the guns? And this is going to be the next step in the slippery slope. They say, oh, well, we, you know, if you're a danger to yourself or others, then the, the police need to be notified and they need, they need to come and take all the guns away. But how are we going to know we got all the guns? Well, that means that we have to man have a mandatory registry of all weapons. And that's a big problem as well. Again, I agree. The mandatory weapons registration type of thing is the next logical step. Because otherwise, how do they know they've got all the guns when they come into your house? You know, what if you have a hidden cache of guns? You know, if you are not, you know, then, they, then there'd have to be a law of you are required to produce all of your registered firearms. And if you have, if you're in possession of any firearm that isn't properly registered, then that's a felony. And all of this is just a felony trap. It's a trap to get you in trouble with the law so you can have your guns taken away permanently. And so these are all these problems with it. You know, uh, what I really always just come back to is this whole notion of I have the right to defend myself and defend my life. My, my, li my right to my life is absolute. If somebody threatens my life, I have the right to defend it. And whatever tool I, I choose to use to do so is none of it, if anyone else's business. All of this minority report pre-crime bullshit of trying to determine if somebody's going to commit a crime is, is bullshit. Also, felons that ha you know have their gun rights taken away, fuck that shit. They still have a right to their, uh, to their weapons as well. So that's what I have to say about that. Well, with the exception of your whole DSM-5 slippery slope argument, you made a really good video. I don't have any qualms with it. I, I can't really critique it because I agree. Anyway.